Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Skulk, bringing you more Major Minor. I know that I've been playing a lot of this in, in, a, in a row. I really want to get through the story so I can uh, have more time to do other recordings. It's not like I don't have time to do other recordings, I just need to get myself into doing so. But I'm really interested in the story. <clears throat> all, of the, all the things that I need to want to do in the background, just leave that to me. You just sit back and enjoy the story. I don't lie, but I'm narrating. <laughs> All right, let's continue. <laughs> we were last left in the bunker. <clears throat> as soon as I exit, I look around. It doesn't look or smell any better out here. <laughs> of course, Akron wouldn't tell us where we were. It was probably for the best anyway. Who knew how Max could be trying to track us? I turn a few corners before running into a rock. Back up. I turned a few corners before running into a rook. <laughs> Sorry, rook. <laughs> hey there, Azure. I'm glad to see you up and about. Did Akron give you one hell of a speech? I have to say, I was definitely skeptical. But it turns out, he knows what he's doing. I knew Singe was acting a little odd lately, but I didn't know he was planning this. An international sting operation? Well, it's good to know that Max was caught. But I didn't know how involved Singe was. I mean, he was playing us all along. Was he playing us? Was there ever going to be a tour? Or was the whole thing just a just a front? I worked for him. And I, I didn't and I don't even know. I knew it was Max all along, you know. But she threatened all of our lives. I couldn't tell anyone or boom. Akron's story got a little bizarre. No one else believed it but me. I got to see Max's power firsthand. I've never be seen anybody move like that. A normal girl could never take me down. Plus, she knew things she just couldn't. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it. She could disappear as she saw fit. She jumped around like crazy. She had to have been spying on all of us. She preyed on our weaknesses. I've never seen anybody do that before. Wow. Akron must have told them all, all a lot. But it makes sense that others wouldn't believe it. The assumption that someone can control time is crazy. Enough to simply laugh away unless you experienced it. And I heard that Max said on the speaker. What Max on the speaker? Something about you saving the world? Or did she say worlds? I can't remember. I just know that this is above me. I'm not going to get involved. Just Max picked me because of our bond. Because that whatever else you have to do, I don't think it's any of my business. I'll just wait here until you know, we can leave. That's probably for the best. I wonder how long we've been here, though. Rook seems to be talk uh, taking this all on in stride. Well, you kind of saved my life. I believe anything you say after that. The previous evidence just helps support it. You've given me no reason to doubt you. If Akron is lying, you tell me. But so far, both stories seem to line up. Anyway, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure you need to make the rounds. Everyone should know what you're, that you're okay. Your bond with Rook was strong enough. Although, I have to ask you one thing. I heard Akron say something interesting. Not that I was spying on you or anything. The sound travels down here, you know? I can even hear Shock uh, talking from here. I can't. I say though. <laughs> he said something that intrigued me. He mentioned bringing people back? Something about his dead sister? He's a very serious guy, isn't he? He wouldn't make something, uh, he wouldn't make something like that up. Is there really a, a way to bring people back? I don't need to know any specifics. 
but he'd hard, uh, but he'd hardly pull that out of the air. It's true. Akron was a very serious guy. I told Rook that it seems like a possibility. A lot of things are still up in the air, but there are people there. But there were people I wanted to bring back too. So, there's a chance it's possible. I wasn't just hearing things then. Can you promise me something, Azure? Please, bring back Kyla. Even if there's just a tiny chance, I, I can't live knowing it was at his expense. I feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm a monument in, to his death. I can't just walk around acting cool. It's eating away at me from the inside. You have to bring him back, Azure. He didn't deserve to die for no reason. We all deserve better than that, you know. <clears throat> you know what? What the heck? It's not like I have the power. Wait, maybe. Because I'm considered the savior, but I wasn't giving any power d due to what Mr. Man said up there. Up there, up where, where the buffalo and deer play. <laughs> the Ark Man. <laughs> Let's just say, even though it... I have no power, so I can't do anything. But it's like a positivity thing. Not like a white... If it's just considered a white lie to... Whatever else, it's still a nice thing to say, anyways. Because we have all these... The know-how of what... That there's these magical power things. I'll say it anyway. Of course I'd bring him back, Kyla. It was one of those, the first things I'd do. But there were a lot of unknown variables to pl at play. But yeah, it's my word. If it's possible, I'll do it. Thank you so much. I know it seems really far-fetched. In fact, this whole situation does. But maybe that's why I believe it so easily. There's a chance for us to correct mistakes. Anybody would spend be uh, spend belief for that. But if you can't bring him back, maybe I can do it, like last time. What do you mean by that? He rubs his arm nervously as he grips his tablet. It doesn't work here. There's no reception at all. It's as useless as a brick. He waves his tablet around frantically. I can't even begin to imagine how he's feeling. He's addicted to that thing, but it won't really work. He'd have to be going through some sort of withdrawal. It makes me cringe just thinking about it. But it's true. Max was right all along. I wasted too much time on this thing. I didn't think it was really harmful. But just look at what happened. I was clearly lying to myself. But who knows how long we'll be here. And I won't be able to use it like I want. So I have no idea what to feel right now. Everyone always tells me to stop. They say, what's so important on there? But I'd never tell anyone. I hit it. Max was the one, uh, one of the first to find out. And look what she did because of it. Strapped me to a bomb. Made my, made my past bite me. But I realized the truth that day. A lot of things just suddenly came cl became clear. Facing death can do that to you. They didn't ask because they wanted to know. They asked because they were concerned. That's more important than them. No. What's more important than them? Why did I neglect them for my tablet? Max said you'd all think I was a freak. That just scared me even more. But I've realized something. I have to. This tablet use uh, this tablet use doesn't affect just me. It affects everybody around me. It can hurt them more than it can hurt me. Murders and bombs are extreme, of course. But these are just physical ways to be hurt. I fear most of the damage is emotional. <clears throat> Sorry about that. 
I started owning up to it, though. I made some real progress with Eclair. I'm even tempted to go back to the cafe chat. But that's... Uh, but that's the sad thing about this. I was missing out on all of that stuff. I couldn't have... I couldn't experience it years ago. I could have experienced years ago. If only I handled my grief a little better. I mean, look at Singe. Barely affected. I wish I could be as calm as he always is. And shock? Well, bad example. But you get it. I didn't handle mine like a rational guy. I started to wonder what he's talking about. I'm not sure how grief was related to the tablet use. I say I decided that it's a good question to continue with. I'm guessing everyone copes with things differently, so he... Something on the tablet, but he probably... <clears throat> he probably uh, uh, typed down things about how he's feeling, trying to drain his... Uh, uh, trying to drown out his emotions or how he's feeling into the tablet to... I don't know. I don't know if I can word it properly with the words I have, but... Some people cope things differently. I think he just uh, had himself absorbed into the tablet, so he had different things to think about instead of those other things to keep his mind off of things. Maybe it was. We'll get to we'll get probably get to it because sometimes I'm talking a lot like this, and then I just click, and the next thing that comes up is the answer. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I never really told anybody before. Max only knew because she was spying. I feel like I can trust you with this. It's not like any more damage could be done. We're in too deep, if you ask me. So, I guess I can tell you a little bit. But let's not make a big deal out of this. I'm not pouring my heart out or anything. Let's just call it fun facts with a rook. No judging, no laughing, just learning. It'll make me feel better that way. It sounds like something Rook would do. And, sure. It's all legitimately fine. He has a way of dancing around important topics. But I guess nobody likes confronting their flaws. <coughs> I would. I want to confront them so I can better myself. If I can't see my own flaws, like something I said or did, and someone sees it, depending on if it's actual truth instead of just someone's opinion, and the opinion isn't even correct, it's just how they feel about the subject. But if it's true darn fact that what I did wasn't right or proper, or I was just oblivious about someone's feelings. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm still a little hesitant, but I need to prove Max wrong. You know? I really don't think I'm a freak. But there's only one way to find out. I have to start opening up, the, up to people. I have to start branching out. It'll be a useful thing to do. That is, if we ever get out of here. I shrug. But he definitely has a point. This might be a place to ponder a new beginnings. We could think of ways to make our lives better. Well... I don't even know where to start. So let's start... So let's go right at the beginning. When I was younger, I had a short... Uh, sort of a mentor. I was born to be a businessman, he'd say. He held a gift... Uh, I held a gift when it came to that stuff. I was, a, I was good at organizing and managing, but I wasn't that great with people. It was the one thing I needed to work on. He helped me break out of my shell, though. He taught me how to interact with people. I was never really good at social cues. But soon enough, I was socially ad uh, adept. I don't mean to brag or anything, but I'm good at whatever I set out to do. That's not bragging, it's confidence in yourself. Bragging is you are meaning to uh, sound high and mighty. You're just, it, you're just being proud of yourself. Proud of something you have. <clears throat> to bring it up, my parents told me that 
I was a child that they didn't really need to teach. I taught myself a lot of things by myself, just by watching. That might be just a really good skill of mine. I'm not going to be grand at everything, but if I put my mind to something and watch something done, I can probably, in due time, um, get it down. It's just, I lack in strength, so I can't do much heavy lifting things. But in skill-based things, with enough practice, I can get there, I'm sure. Everyone can, I think. I guess it all depends on how someone emotionally is attached to or goes about things. Anyways, back to the story. <clears throat> at that point, I was good at everything. Business management and PR. Not to mention my knack for technology. I'm going to make a long story short here. I left uh, America and came to Japan. It wasn't too hard to learn the language. That's how I ended up at the cafe chat. I know, that's stupid. Me, at a maid cafe? But you know all about that in Endeavor. Ake, uh, Akihabara had everything I wanted. People, technology, opportunity. I used my skills to find happiness. But to be honest, I was a little lonely. My mentor refused to leave America behind. Uh, to leave America behind. We could only talk to each other online. I never met him face to face again. To me, he just lived on my tablet. But it was better than nothing, right? I had popularity. I ran a maid cafe. He was more proud of me than anything. He really considered me one of his sons. I accomplished everything he he dreamed of. There's no better feeling than that. For a time, everything was perfect. We all know what that means, right? Tragedy is always sneaking up on us. It was a freak accident that took his life. Something went wrong at an investor meeting. It took a while before the news hit me. He lost his life at an investor's meeting? Could that be related to what Akron told me? I started to think he was ignoring me. Because of me, he just stopped responding. But I was shocked when the truth found me. I'm not proud of what happened next. My ability to perform at a, at a cafe suffered. Eventually, I didn't even want to go. But how could it go down? Uh, go on without me? The truth is, it couldn't. But for some reason, I didn't care. I hid in my house and shut out the world. That's when my tablet was uh, my tablet use started. I knew a lot about technology. I was a genius when it came to that stuff. So I put together all of my skills and... He grips the tablet even tighter, sniffing softly. I thought I could bring him back. I don't mean for real, of course, but chatting online wasn't real either. I dedicated my time to making a program. Something to keep me company, you know? Something that could... Uh, that would let him live on. That's what he meant. Um, I could probably bring him back, but not really. He can program uh, as best as he can of putting an AI version of someone. I didn't leave the house for months. I ordered all of my food online. This is more important to me than anything. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? He helped me break out of my shell, and then he put me right back in it. It was such a simple program at first. It would understand small phrases. And it could give automated uh, automated responses. But that's all I really needed. It wasn't much different from before. And this time, he'd never stop responding. Gosh. I'm gonna sound insane right now. As we talked, he learned more and more. But like before, he taught me too. All the information took up tons of data, so I had to store him on the cloud. I'm guessing that's why it didn't work now. But there you have it. Feel free to judge. I wanted my friend back. It's pathetic. But there's one thing you just can't deny. 
He helped me, like he did before. He kept talking, and I got stronger. Eventually, I can leave the house again. But by then, Cafe Chat was screwed. It seems like they were out, about to close. So I really only had one choice. I sought employment immediately. That's when Singe hired me to work for him. A smart lackey. I was just what he needed. The salary was good, but not good enough. It would take years to save Cafe Chat. I, yeah. <clears throat> so I begged him for a lump sum payment. I might have pulled some strings. You know, threatened him a little. But he really did need all my skills. Eventually he caved and gave me a, cap, a check. I cashed it and, in and it instantly wrote a new one. I gave it to Claire and Cafe Chat. I saved the business from bankruptcy. But it's the le least I can could have done. I put, them, I put them there in the first place. And that's it, really. And here we're here today, talking. I've come to terms with my mistakes. I still talk to him all the time. He gave me advice on what to say or do. But now, I think I need to do that myself. I need to face my problems head on. I can't just hide on my own fantasy. So that's what I'll do if I get out. That, and mend things with Eclair. And I make up for what I've done. There's so much lost time to recover. He gives me a soft smile before turning away. <clears throat> this is where it gets awkward, right? There's a silence. You're speechless. Don't worry. I'll save you trouble. But if I could ask you for one more favor, let's try to bring him back for real. That is, if the power exists. There's so much more I need to tell him. So much more for him to be proud about. And I'll work with you to make it happen. Artificial support. He walks away without another word. Well, I guess that solved the mystery on his tablet. I'm not sure what to make of the story. It's quite deep. It wasn't the best thing for him to do, of course. But all things considered, it ended up quite well. Cafe Chat was back on business, and he got a new job. He was able to break out of that shell once again. I remember all the time that I spent with him. I recall every moment he typed away on his tablet. All of the situations were given a new meaning to me. I'd likely never look at him in the same way again. But this was just the beginning. I had to let everybody else know I was okay. With that, I walked further down the tunnel. My mind wonders who I might run into next. Yeah, it's safe. But we're not done yet. This is only 20 minutes in. 23 minutes, but you know, I'm, I'm only the one counting. <clears throat> As I walked deeper into the bunker, I'm more confused. I've never seen a place like this in my life. Were we even in Japan right now? Of course, I'd never know, so I keep on walking. After a few moments, I notice Shock by the door. He's uh, chugging a can of pop star and looks fatigued. Hey, Azure. It's good to see you up and about. Did Akron have a talk with you? A nod. And tell him it's nice to see him, too. What a bunch of nonsense, eh? And here I thought he was becoming uh, credible. I have never heard of a far-fetched story. You can't possibly believe that, right? I mean, we all handle crisis differently. But to validate it with a fairy with fairy tales, his problems go deeper than I thought. And he's holding us in here because of it. If that's the case, we're not getting out. Whatever it is he's waiting for, it's not gonna happen. We need to escape before we starve. 
It made sense from his point of view. But he hadn't seen the things that we've seen. He hadn't directly witnessed the arc or Max's power. To him, Akron really was making stuff up. But I better not tell Shock that I believe him. If he knew I sided with Akron, he'd be angry. And that was something he was really good at. I decided to change the subject to avoid drama. Perhaps he could tell me a little about himself. Ever since we met, he's been caught up in the moment. A little relaxation in breathing room would help him. If anything, it would help the time go by faster. Your bond with shock was strong enough. Yay! Well, I've been thinking about Clannis a lot. I'm sure you heard. We go way back. I'm just reliving those old memories. It makes me all nostalgic for Canada. But as, so, as much as I want to go back, I can't. That's the thing with nostalgia. It's fake. It's like looking at a shattered mirror. The pieces of their own look promising. But if you put them together, you'll see. The full picture isn't what you want at all. You glorify the past with specific memories. Sometimes the bad is completely ignored. That's yeah, probably true. Like, nostalgia? There's lots of games I enjoyed in the past as a kid. But when I go back to them, at uh, this, a few of them, or some movies or some songs, like, oh. <laughs> some of them I'm actually still loving, but there are some, uh, still those uh, pips in there that you're going, ah, oh, I remember that too now. Yep. <laughs> lots of good mem uh, lots of good memories and feelings from the from my very first home that I grew up in a long time ago. But I was a kid. There's a lot of things that happened, but it was always home to me. That's just what your childhood does. It's just memories of back then. There's a lot of things back then that that could be the bad things that can be drowned out because of all the good things. But if you were to go back um, and relive it as an adult or just relive it with your mindset now, if you were able to, you can see all those things and probably re be reliving all those all those faults as well. Reliving all the good things too, but all those faults, all those bad things that came around too. But the thing is, you become who you are because of things you experience through your life. Like you learn. I learned not to ride so fast uh, over a bump when you're not so experienced with a bike. And uh, don't run into uh, <laughs> watch where you're going and don't run into uh, uh, those cement parking things for cars or you'll get your groin it hurts very badly. I won't go into detail there, but it really hurt. <laughs> Anyways, there's just lots of bad things that uh, could be drowned out from your past. Uh, so just that, if you put all the pieces together from your past, you'll have good and bad mixed in. You probably wouldn't want to relive it again because you'll have to go through the bad things too. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Let me take a drink first. If I went back, I'd regret it. I mean, sure, I had lots of fun, but there's a lot of hurt, too. I remember when I first met Clance. It was way back in elementary school. For some reason, he'd follow me around. I have to say, it was really annoying. Some random kid stalking you? I'd just tune him out and ignore him. He goes far back in elementary school? For some reason, I didn't think it went back that far. Anyway, my dad thought we were friends. So he got in touch with Clint's parents. Next thing I know, we were hanging out. I thought my dad should have asked me first. Now I was forced to acknowledge him. This wasn't a... It wasn't a school setting anymore. 
I didn't have any friends. I was clueless. So I decided to ask him why he followed me. I thought it was a reasonable question. Apparently, he knew my family was mili military. Or should I say, my dad was. My mom was long since out of the picture. But he said everyone else knew too. And that explained why I had no friends. He told me they were all afraid of me. I don't know why, but they were. And he told me it was for the best. He said that all the kids bullied him. Unless he was with me, of course. Since the other kids were scared, they wouldn't mess with him if I was there. This will, uh, this will sound weird, so just play along. But I always felt like I didn't measure up. My dad fought in wars, and I was just a kid. It kind of made me feel important. I mean, having someone count on me. So I made sure the other kids stayed away. We became best friends after that. All the way up until high school. But who doesn't drift apart then? My dad's military days came to an end. At that point, he was a private conduct uh, contractor. He got a job, and we had to move. I remember Clans taking it badly, but he had other things to focus on. He was starting to become recognized. Talent shows, contests, you name it. His career was sure to blossom soon. It's too bad I'd be gone when it happened. Perhaps me leaving was a good thing. He'd be able to focus on his future. Better than us distract, uh, distracting each other. It took a while. But I got over it. We tried to stay in touch, but failed. You know how all that stuff can be. But I started to focus on my own career. It turned out, I was great at soccer. Enough to get a full uh, academic scholarship. I could go to any school I wanted. So I aligned it with my dad's work. That's how I ended up in America. But something went wrong with his employer. Some crisis at an investor meeting. Jeez, all these... Apparently... <laughs> this story is lining up all these people from from the concert by saying all their parents went to an investor meeting and then... Blam. I'm guessing Kyla had something to do with it too. Kyla had uh, probably his father or brother at the at the meeting too or he was or maybe he's a brother the brother of kyla kyla is the one that went to the uh the meeting too just because all these things uh, so far we have two to three stories that are lining up with the the, uh, the investor meeting so i guess that uh, i guess that's just an idea about kyla it said the real kyla died many uh, a while back this is probably his brother or a friend that uh, wanted to that you know took his, uh, his brother or friend's place and took his name something like that maybe i never saw my father again another mention of the investor meeting could his father have worked for armstrong i wasn't in the mood to continue school i dropped out took a bit of a dark turn. My promising soccer career died with him. I wanted to join the military, maybe to follow in his footsteps, but they wouldn't let me do it. They said I was mentally an unfit. It hurt, but I get what they meant. There was a chance I was being reckless. So I kind of just went underground. That part of my life is a blur. But there was one thing I remember, fighting. That's what I wanted, though. That's why I applied for the military. I had to find an outlet somewhere. When they turned me down, I went elsewhere. The term fight club is totally cliche, but there was a lot of martial arts rings. Not all of them played by the rules, but that's kind of what I wanted. It was a good way to state my aggression. Uh, state my aggression. That's definitely a colorful background. He lost his best friend and his father. He must have been an emotional basket case. As odd as fighting was, 
it's good that he found a leaf. He must have. He must be somewhat out of shape, though. If it's not mistaken, Akron disarmed him quite fast. Or perhaps Akron is just stronger than we think. Yeah, but nobody likes rule breakers. That's how you get the law involved. And trust me, they got involved. I was given a bit of an ultimatum. Stop the fighting or go to jail. Obviously, I chose to stop. But they still checked on me. It was hard for me to stay anonymous. I had to show them I was done for good. So I decided to give them what they wanted. I picked up a guitar and started playing. The least violent thing I could think of. And what do you know? I was good at it. I didn't even have time. I didn't even have to practice. No one believed me, but I was a natural. So I started to play on at open mic nights. Then the police left me alone. I guess they believed my little act. It's not that I like playing the guitar. I just do it when it, the circumstances need it. I actually started to get noticed. Clance was getting famous by then too. To be honest, I had no idea. My priorities were always elsewhere. I remember seeing him do an interview. It was on TV in one of the bars. I thought he looked so stuck up. A far cry from the guy I used to know. Fame, came ch fame can change people, I thought. I hoped it would never happen to me. But then I saw him, right there in the bar. He smiled at me and told me how good I was. He actually came to watch one of my shows. Usually, it's the other way around. You go to a show and hope to get noticed. You never hear stories like mine. We shared some drinks and got to talking. It turns out, I was horribly wrong. He was still the same guy I knew. That's when he asked me to play for him. He was going, he was about to start touring. Him and his manager were seeking talent. I agreed without a single thought. And I can tell you now, it was a mistake. I was driven by my nostalgia. Back then, we were best friends. Back when my father was alive. I wanted to feel that way again. Another situation for me to play the guitar. And a chance to relieve, relive those glory days. That was a recipe for this disaster. Touring with him and reconnecting is like rebuilding that broken mirror. We got the good, then we got the bad. More death, more destruction. It became one huge nightmare. I wish I never agreed to join him. Maybe then, they'd all be alive. Tragedy stalks me, you know. First my dad, now everyone else. And I couldn't even protect him this time. It wasn't like when we were back in school. You can't believe the past. I was naive. You can't relive the past. I was naive. He slams his fist against the wall. It looks painful, but he doesn't even flinch. He seems to think he's responsible for all of this. That's why I decided to keep people away. I won't get close to anybody again. My true glory days, they were underground. I didn't make connections. I was solo. There was no one around me to get hurt. I think that's the best environment for me. So when I get out, that's what I'll do. I'll go back to how things w uh, were before. Back when I was only looking out for myself. He turns away from me, like he's done talking. But wouldn't that be repeating his mistake? Going back underground, it would be chasing the past. If he knew what he was doing, he'd push forward. Eh, you're good, you know that? I didn't see it that way. For Food for thought, at least. Last time we talked, he mentioned philanthro philanthropic work. That would be a much better idea than peddling back. A relapse would only hurt everybody involved. And Clance would never agree to let him do that. Yeah. You're right. 
He looks back at me with tear-filled tear eyes. He just followed me like he used to. Childhood bonds. He walked away, his head held high, almost as if he's trying to mask his crying. But from what he's told me, he has to move on. He's caught up in some weird superstition. There was no way he was responsible for this. It was just an easy way to enact self-pity. He had to move on and realize it wasn't his fault. He loses... Eh. His losses have been extreme, but he still has himself. As long as he didn't lose his path, he'd be okay. I hope he stuck up to the uh, philanthropy idea. I walk in the opposite direction, venturing deeper. After a few moments, I turned down a long corridor. Perhaps I could help the next person I saw, too. As I walk forward, I wonder who it might be. Yeah! That's safe. Still a little extra time! Still more time! We got more time to read another story. If I was naming these episodes, this one would be Getting to Know You, Getting to Know All About You, from King and I. That, when I, I know I grew up watching that movie, and then when I watched it as an adult, there was so much cheesiness in that. A lot of singing, eh, it's gonna happen. But there's so much cheesiness. But there's one character in there that is definitely the comic relief. <laughs> the guy that keeps losing all his teeth. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you should try it. You should look it up. King and I. The old cartoon one. <laughs> it looks like I might be getting closer to the surface. The air is less stuffy and I can feel a slight breeze. Dang, if stuffiness is gonna get down there, you really have to got to have some ventilation. It's nice to feel the outside air once more. I turn a corner and notice Inumi standing there. He's writing on the green wall with some chalk. Where do you get the chalk? I look closer. He's doing math. The same equation that saved our lives. Is he trying to figure out how to solve that problem? After all, Akron gave him the answer earlier. Maybe he wanted to learn it on his own. Hi. I greet him back with a small wave. I ask him what he's up to. I'm just doing some math. I have an exam coming up soon. I don't want to fail. He seems to be talking, taking his studies seriously. I ask him if he has some time to chat. After all, he might be here for a while. Yeah, sure. Uh, I have some questions for you, actually. Akron told me a story about his sister. He said that she had powers, but he said that you two do it as well. Does that mean you and Akron are bad? I laugh, but this makes Anumi look confused. I let him know that having powers doesn't make you bad. It's what you do with them that decides your allegiance. And in this case, Akron and I weren't evil. In fact, we were dedicated to bringing Max down. I let him know that she'll pay for what she did. I wish I didn't have to be like that. It, it, I wish it didn't have to be like that. You should. You shouldn't have to make someone pay, especially not for being bad. The goal should be something different, like not having bad people at all. Everyone should still be alive in that case. That's true, but it's not so simple. In fact, I know that's not what he really wants. He just wants his brother to be alive again. You can never rid the world of bad in intentions. Yeah, sorry. You're right. We always had so much fun together. But now, I'll get sent to another home. I really wish I could stay with the tour. It was, fine. It was finally starting to feel like home. I mean, a real one. With, with a real family. If only Bro was given some powers. Given the same powers. He, he's all about saving people, you know? Just like he saved me a few years ago. He did... Uh, what did he mean by get sent to another home? And for that matter, 
How did Clint save him? I asked him what he meant by that, out of curiosity. Your bond with Inumi wasn't strong enough. What did I not do? I didn't think I had any decision that I missed, but you know what? I had many strong connections with Akron, Rook, and uh, Shocker. I'm bound to not have a strong connection with someone. Dang. I would have actually liked to know. Maybe... Maybe if I saved Kyla? I don't know. Maybe. But, anyways, I missed it. Oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. I promised that I'd keep quiet about it. You'll have to pretend you never heard that. It's more than a little confusing, but there is always something different about Nui. Like, why he called Clance his brother? Especially when they looked like nothing alike. But I'm not about to against his wishes. I promise him that my lips are sealed. Whatever it was, he needed to keep it secret. I wasn't going to force him to tell me. Sweet. Thank you. Singed wouldn't be really mad at me. Uh, would have been really mad at me. He's scary when he gets like that, you know? So I've heard. I'm going to get back to my studies. But thank you for stopping by to chat. It was starting to get a little lonely. I'm used to spending time with bro. So things feel really different right now. I'm sure I'll get used to it, though. I nod as he turns away from me. He quickly starts scribbling on the wall. I could tell from the equation that he wasn't studying, but I wasn't going to call out, uh, call the kid out on his bluff. So I wish him good luck as I start to leave. I look at the time on my phone. Almost midnight. The battle for the Ark would come uh, soon come to close. Knowing that, I walk back, uh, back, walk back the way I came. I must have talked to everybody here by now. Akron mentioned that Daz and Singe were elsewhere. I hope that they are okay, since times are tough. Speaking of tough times, something catches my eye. There's a chalk drawing on the wall beside me. It's a picture of, it's a picture of Anumi and Clance holding hands. The text underneath reads, I miss you, bro. It's the last thing I'd see before I leave them behind. Before I leave them behind. Yeah. We'll save. And even though it's not a full hour, I feel like if I continue, we're gonna get, uh, it's not gonna, it's gonna be a while before I get another save point. And I have like, like 12 minutes before an hour. And sometimes these checkpoints are quite a distance away. So I'll leave this one here. But the story's not over yet, of course. So, thank you guys for stopping by. And until I see you guys again. Have a great day, everyone.